how strong is the link between nicotine and cardiovascular disease? Uh, I would say it's not strong at all. Uh, we have a lot of evidence, uh, not only from the use of pharmaceutical uh, nicotine products, but mostly from the use of snus in Sweden, uh, with snus users obtaining the same or even higher levels of nicotine daily than a smoker, but having minimal uh, effect on uh, the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So the, uh, the risk for future development of heart disease is almost the same as a non-smoker. This is a clear indication that the nicotine that they obtain at much high levels is irrelevant to the cardiovascular risk. And we know that it's the uh, oxidative stress uh, and the inflammation caused by smoking, but not by nicotine, that causes uh, heart disease and vascular disease. It's not nicotine. You've been carrying out research on cigarettes. What are your, what have your findings to date told you about the safety of e-cigarettes? Well, uh, usually I use the term uh, harmful, more or less harmful, and not safe because uh, there is nothing safe in society today. So I think that there is no doubt that, and today no one disputes that e-cigarettes are by far less harmful than smoking. Uh, there is some disagreement on how much the risk is reduced, but I think it's a consensus today that it is reduced. Um, I think that the estimates that have been provided by organizations like Public Health England and Royal College of Physicians are very reasonable estimates based not on hardcore epidemiological data because we don't have such data yet, but based on the chemistry profile and the toxicology profile of uh, the e-cigarette aerosol compared to the tobacco cigarette smoke. So I think that uh, communicating to smokers that it is a product approximately 95% less harmful than smoking is a very uh, relevant and uh, informative uh, kind of um, um, education for the smokers that can um, uh, help them make informed decisions. And you think that 95% risk reduction figure is a reliable figure? Uh, I think it is the best estimate we can have right now with currently available evidence. Eventually, we will need long-term epidemiological evidence in order to be absolutely certain and to accurately quantify the risk, uh, the risk difference and the risk reduction. This is an estimate, so it remains an estimate. It is based on current knowledge, uh, and that's always what we say in medicine, based on what we know until now. But I think that over these years, and while seeing that there is nothing being published uh, that um, changes our views or our estimates, I think it is very important to communicate that accurately to the, to the smokers. Because unfortunately, throughout the world, smokers are today uh, severely misinformed. And many of them, perhaps the majority, think that e-cigarettes are equally or even more harmful than smoking. This means that there is something wrong in the public health community because over the years, while we have stronger evidence about the risk reduction from e-cigarettes, people get more and more misinformed about it. We don't, as you say, know, fully know the long-term consequences and we don't know what will emerge. What would you say to those countries that take a more cautious approach than the UK, ones that are hesitant to put these products on the market? The uh, argument that we don't know what's going to happen after 20 or 30 years is not valid. And it's not valid for a single reason. There is no product in the history of humanity, whether it's a consumer product, a pharmaceutical product or anything else, that was accepted and marketed after 20 or 30 years of clinical research. Nothing. Because it is impossible for such research to happen. Uh, all products, and of course even pharmaceuticals, they have a lot of testing. But even for a pharmaceutical that will be released into the market today and may be used by people for 20 or 30 years every day, it's impossible to wait until we have 30 years evidence before marketing the product. What we do with pharmaceuticals, for example, is what we call post-marketing surveillance. So we have the evidence from the laboratory studies. We do a one or two year clinical study and then we release the pharmaceutical into the market and we monitor the population which is using 
the product. And over time, over the years, we develop the long-term evidence that you are suggesting. The same should happen with the cigarettes. Nothing different compared to anything else, whether it's a consumer product or even, as I said, a pharmaceutical. So the argument that we don't know what's going to happen after 30 years is not valid because it has never been applied to anything ever. And secondly, knowing that smoking kills 7 million people worldwide every year, it is, in my opinion, I could even call it unethical to do nothing for something that we know for more than 10 years now of research, at least eight years of intense research, that we haven't still found anything particularly concerning, especially when you compare it with smoking. 